Hello Internet, welcome to the stream. A few hours earlier, we had a very painful session where I fought against uh, LibJPEG Turbo and finally I was able to get some decompressed JPEG data from a PDF stream. And one task that I did not have the energy to finish and also did not have the understanding yet to finish is that I need to implement a custom memory manager uh, that uh, provides memory management services to libjpeg turbo from my application such that libjpeg turbo when it um, decompresses uh, JPEG streams, actually uses the memory management facilities of my code base instead of the standard uh, malloc and free calls of the C runtime. I need to do that because I want to get total control over memory management and I want to see exactly how much memory is allocated at each point in time and I want to be able to easily check against memory leaks in my code and so on. So it has many, many benefits. Ultimately also hopefully performance benefits uh, when I will start to optimize memory allocation. So it has, has many benefits to um, have memory allocation completely under control. And if you use libraries, that's always uh, much harder to do. And for some libraries that you might use, it's almost impossible or very, very hard. For well-designed libraries, it's not so bad because well-designed libraries usually already have some hooks where you can attach your own custom memory management and so does libjpeg. The catch, however, is that the memory management interface of libjpeg is quite elaborate and I needed some time to understand what is actually going on. So if we look at the JPEG memory manager, that is a kind of virtual interface that you need to implement uh, in order to provide the memory management services that the library needs. And there is a default implementation that ultimately boils down just to using malloc and free, but it, it does so in a very complicated way. Um, <clears throat> Because, um, yeah, you will see why. Uh, I, will, I will slowly explain uh, how this memory manager works and then we will implement our own version of it. So the first thing you notice is that there are several allocation functions. You have alloc small, alloc large, alloc s array, alloc b array. And then you have something very similar to allocation functions, the request virtual S array and request virtual B array, together with realized virtual B array, uh, or realized virtual arrays. I will, uh, in a minute I will explain what this is about. Then you have these access functions for the virtual, only for the virtual arrays. And then there is a free function, but it's not a free function where you free a single memory block but you free a complete pool of memory and then you have kind of a destructor function that takes down everything. So that's it, but why are there so many different allocation functions and what's up with these uh, virtual array functions? What are they about? And <clears throat> the easiest way to understand all of this is to think in uh, two different uh, dimensions of um, about the, the objects you want to allocate on, on the heap. One, th uh, one thing is you can categorize objects by size. And libjpeg has uh, three categories for sizes, small, large, and too large in a sense, meaning potentially too large for for memory actually, so for too large for RAM. And the last category is actually what is called, sorry, 
the last category is what is behind this virtual stuff. So So these are just the three uh, size categories. And <clears throat> for small, you can think about, let's say something like less than 10 K bytes. Large might be something like hundreds of kilobytes. And virtual or too large would, would be anything where the library thinks this may actually be too large to keep it uh, all in memory at the same time. And of course, this is very system dependent and actually on a modern desktop uh, system, uh, this category does not make a lot of sense as you will see. But for very small, let's say embedded systems or so, you could easily imagine that you have, could have uh, structures that are too large to keep in, um, keep in memory uh, at the same time. So this is the first categorization. And you see here that um, alloc small is for small obje objects, alloc large for large obje objects. Then you have S array and B array. Those are kind of helper functions that combine small and large. So you have here a kind of a combination of these two for these S array and, and B array stuff. And the idea is that these are two dimensional arrays where, or, or, or um, arrays with two levels where the first level is a small array. So first level is a small array uh, that just has um, one pointer for each image row that the library is working on. And it's actually not for all the, it's, it's actually only for the image rows that are in the current stripe that the, that the decompressor is working on. So it's only a few elements typically, maybe as few as eight, for example. Uh, so you have this small first level and this points to larger chunks of memory that make up the uh, second level that is then actually the horizontal dimension of the image. So this is a, a kind of combination of small and large. And excuse me for a second. So we will see in detail how this works later. So it's, it's nothing special. It's, it's just a basically helper function. And S is for sample array and B is for block array. So these are just two kinds of arrays that you, that you need in, in JPEG decoding or encoding. The only difference between them is the element size. So either a single sample or a whole block of eight by eight coefficients. And why does it make sense to distinguish between these categories, these size categories? Well, um, it makes sense because an efficient memory allocator will use different uh, strategies for these uh, different heuristics for these different size categories. Especially um, one thing that will be typical and that we will also do in our implementation is that for the small size, so this is this up here for the small size, we will block items together to avoid having too much memory allocation overhead because typically for every um, 
for every block that you allocate either from the system or from the C runtime library, you have some additional overhead that is used up in memory uh, for that is used for the housekeeping information. And <clears throat> for small objects, it makes, it makes a lot of sense to uh, group them together into, uh, into blocks uh, so that you pay the overhead cost uh, only once per block and not for every of the small items. The other items, so large and, and, and the two large items, of those you expect that there will only be few and so you can, um, you can allocate them individually. So that's one of the big distinctions in, in the heuristics that the memory allocator will be able to use. Um, what is, now what's the difference between large and too large? As I said, for large it's still expected that you that is always completely in memory. For too large, the, the library actually allows you to manually swap out uh, parts of the array and that's why it has these access functions. These access functions um, alert you beforehand. They say, okay, now the code needs to work on this part of the array, please swap it in. <clears throat> and maybe swap another part out. That's what these access, access functions do. And of course, on modern systems, on modern desktop systems, for example, this does not make a lot of sense because actually the, the operating system uh, does this for you and does it probably much, much better then you will implement it um, for your application. But probably for old and small systems, this could make a lot of sense. So this is, this is a bit showing the, the age of this library and also the, the very large portability of this library that it, it's, it's just meant to, uh, to work on very different, <clears throat> very different kinds of systems. Okay. We, have an infestion by spammers. We need to ban some people. Let's see if that works. I'm not sure if that works. Maybe I should check here. Okay, bye bye spammers. Sorry for that. Okay, where was I? Yeah, you have. So this is showing the age of the library. <clears throat> um, in our implementation, we will not implement this swapping in and out manually. We will just. Uh, let let the operating system take care of that. So another thing I need to explain, what is the, the difference between, between request and realize? Well, the idea is that for these very large or too large arrays, <clears throat> allocation is split up in two phases. First, the code requests everything that it needs, but nothing is allocated yet. <clears throat> and then you call the realize function. And this 
this will perform the actual allocations. The idea being that um, then when, when you know all that is, uh, be, that is needed, you can make better decisions about how to ex actually split up your precious memory. So these are just, these taken together are just allocation functions, just split up into two phases. So you have allocation and then use, so swapping in and then freeing. And for the freeing, I need to explain the other dimension in my sketch. So uh, another distinction that this memory allocator makes is the lifetime, about the lifetime of the objects. And there are two lifetimes actually defined. One is per image and one is permanent. And per image means that as soon as you are done with the JPEG image that you are decoding, all the per image data is uh, collectively freed and only the permanent data remains. And once you are completely done with the libjpeg library and you uh, call <coughs> the destroy decompress function, all the so-called permanent objects are collectively freed. And <coughs> objects are never individually freed in this allocator. Uh, that's, that makes it very convenient for, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> for the code using this allocator because it never has to think about freeing objects. It just assigns a lifetime. It tells, it just tells the allocator whether this is a per image or a permanent object. <coughs> okay, so, um, Yeah, then we have these, these helper functions S array and B array. And for um, the virtual ones, we actually have these, have different functions for S and B arrays. So all together, All together, we can, we we will have this um, eight, let's say eight different kinds of objects on the heap, and these um, combinations of of objects. So, um, unless you have any any further questions, that's my explanation that I explained both to myself and also to you, so that I. I know what's going on in the implementation. And now we will start to implement this, this interface. Uh, I should maybe mention that there's actually a second interface layer in the in, inside libjpeg where um, the system independent code interfaces with the system dependent code. So uh, most of what I uh, described now is actually implemented in a kind of system independent way and this code then calls into a few functions that are actually system dependent and actually uh, reserve memory from the operating system for example or actually do the swapping in and out and so on. So there is inside libjpeg if you use the if you use the standard memory uh, memory manager of libjpeg, then you have inside still another interface layer where it goes then to the system dependent functions. And <clears throat> uh, that explains why I was so confused um, in, in, the, in the previous stream, because when you look at the code uh, of libjpeg, you see something very strange, namely that the memory manager, that is the system independent code is quite elaborate. So it is uh, more than 1000 lines and it does all these funny logic with um, preparing these virtual arrays for swapping things out and calling functions to create the backing store and so on. And then there is 
the implementation of the system level uh, system dependent functions that is extremely simple and it just calls malloc and and free and actually it it does not allow you to create a backing store and so on so that's a much more simple implementation that is the system dependent level and the reason why this is like this is that I think the reason is that the system dependent layer is actually prepared for all kinds of systems and this simple layer here that we have is is actually what libjpg turbo then uses for desktop systems where it doesn't really care a lot about um, about memory and doesn't do any virtual swapping in and swapping out manually and so on so that's why i was uh, confused today because first I saw this very complicated memory manager and then I saw that the actual implementation does nothing but malloc and free and ignores everything else. It's just that these two different these two different um, layers of code um, are targeting different ranges of systems. Uh, that's that's I think what is going on. So this this is layer is not so, so generic it's it's just very very simple and it's what because libjpg turbo does not seem to care too much about very small systems that um, would need the more complicated memory management okay so let's move the tablet out of the way <clears throat> and let's get started I hope I did not blast your ears or something. I'm having a bit of trouble because I <clears throat> I need too many warm clothes because my apartment is so freezing cold currently. So I cannot clip to my shirt. So let's go to the memory manager. We need to implement all these functions. So we will create a JPEG uh, memory manager that will actually be derived from this abstract interface um, and it will implement these functions. So let's do it like this let's copy this two times first we will need it for the actual uh, function definitions so let's use a let's record a vim macro for rewriting this <clears throat> so if we are at the parenthesis we will change two characters to jpeg memory manager
Okay, thank you again. So, next thing is we will turn them into functions, function definitions actually. So, uh, the next thing we will do is we will need an init function. Uh, we will actually need our own, our own memory manager for that, I guess. Okay, and here we will do something else. So let's record another win macro. Just need two names. So First, we will need some initialization of our own, so that's that is currently um, incomplete. Okay. Now, for the actual implementation of these functions, uh, there is some common code that we will need in all of them. Uh, we will first need um, first we need to get the actual memory manager object so that is shape uh, the memory manager pointer Uh, we cast c info dot mem I think 
let's see if that is correct. Mm, JPEG common. Yeah, mem is the memory manager. And we cast this to our own type. We will assert that it's not zero. And then we will print a debug message. That traces the call. Okay, so something like this we will do for every one of these functions. <clears throat> so let's copy this to a register and let's make another Vim macro. Yeah, very nice. So now we need a bit of cleanup. What I actually also want to, um, I want to write a print the, the arguments here. And I want to clean this indentation up. So what kind of type is J dimension? Unsigned integer. Pool ID, samples per row, num rows. Okay. I think the same here. Yeah, again, clean up the indentation. Yeah, also here, indentation. We have the pool, the bool, no, the pool. We have the bool. Um, we have the three things here. So same probably for B array, because B and S array are always very parallel. The only difference, as I said, is the element size. So pool ID, pre zero, samples per row, num rows, max access. And here it's very similar, but not exactly the same pool ID. Pre zero blocks per row, num rows, and max access. Okay. Here we have nothing extra. Here we, what do we have here? Okay, the point per row, pointer, uh, start row. Num rows are writable. Mm. 
The same for the B array, I guess. So pointer, start rows, num rows, writable. Okay, here we only have the, the pool ID. And here we have nothing. Okay, that was the easy stuff. That was the easy stuff. Now comes the actual work. So, what do we need? Don't need an I here. That's not what we need. Um, we will need to, to remember our memory manager, our own memory manager. Because from that guy we actually get our memory. Then my idea is the following. My idea is, so let's, let's create another layer here. How we will, how will we actually implement this stuff? My idea is that we will handle large and too large in exactly the same way. That simplifies a lot because, as I said, we will let the, the operating system take care of uh, swapping out stuff and we will, if we have a block of small objects, I plan to handle this also as a large element. So the whole block will become one large element. So in the end, um, the, the core of our implementation uh, will be the large object handling, which we will have once per image and once permanent. So we will have two separate pools of these large objects and the small stuff will be blocked uh, and then the blocks will be handled by the large stuff. That's my idea. So we, we have a blocking layer on top of the large stuff and that handles the small stuff. <clears throat> That's the most compact way I can think of to implement this and the, the lifetime, the per image and the permanent, we will just do the same as to do it in the libjpeg uh, implement, standard implementation. We will just do it by having two copies of our whole uh, allocator. They, uh, at least of the, not of the allocator, but of the allocator data structures, we will have two copies. So we will have something like a, a pool structure. Actually, I'm not sure if pool is the right term here or if we should call it an arena. I think we should call it an arena probably.
A region or arena is a collection of allocated objects that can be efficiently deallocated all at once. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So we shouldn't call it a pool. Pool is something slightly different. Because a pool I would call an actual contiguous, contiguous region of memory from which you get smaller chunks. So that's actually what we will do for the small objects. We will have a, a pool um, allocation. So this we will actually call arena. Um, so an arena collects allocations that will be collectively freed at once. That's the purpose. And inside the arena, we will have structures for the small and for the large stuff. So we will have small stuff and large stuff. For the large stuff, as I said, large meaning here, we assume that these objects that are allocated are so large that the housekeeping overhead is negligible compared to them because we only have a few of them and, and they are large compared to any overhead that we might have. And for these objects, um, hey, welcome, read my code. Yeah. The difference between pool and arena, I would, I would formulate um, as follows, is that the arena is defined by this uh, collective freeing. So <clears throat> the objects in an arena are not necessarily um, directly adjacent in memory, but the point is they are, when you clean up, you free them all at once. So you throw the whole arena away at once. Uh, <clears throat> you might also do that with a pool. So a pool might uh, itself be inside an arena or might also comprise an arena, but um, a pool has the, the, the additional property that memory is, it's one, con uh, one contiguous chunk of memory from which you take little pieces to satisfy um, memory requests. So that, that's at least my understanding. So I, I don't know if these words are always used exactly with these definitions, but that is uh, how we will use them in this code. So um, yeah, the large stuff will just be arena organized, it will not be necessarily contiguous in memory. And we will probably simply have a simple linked, a sing, singly linked list of blocks, I think. So I think we will just have something like something like a large block. that has a next pointer and, and some data afterwards. Uh, the pool can, yeah, I mean the pool can fragment in the sense that it, that you take little pieces from it and, and uh, to satisfy requirements, uh, requests for memory. Uh, The arena, 
uh, the arena is more logical concept. So for the arena, as we use it, it's more a logical concept. Um, it does not refer to the actual uh, position of the things in, in memory, but rather to, um, to their lifetime. So, I mean, ma many implementations will, will maybe um, try to actually make it, uh, make it a region in memory that you can physically uh, override when you're done or something like that. But we will, we will not do that. For us, it will just be a logical collection of objects. So fragmentation will not even be a category that you can think about here or that you can, that, that is meaningful for the area. <clears throat> um, we will have a first pointer and from this uh, we will have a singly linked list of large blocks. Uh, as we assume that there will be few large objects, this list should not be, get very long, so it should not be a problem to run this list. Um, we will also, so that we don't get quadratic at least, We will remember the last large block so we can be faster when we allocate. So we, yeah, as I said, we don't get quadratic uh, when, we, when we allocate. Um, okay, that's, that's it for the large, the data structure for the large block stuff. Um, yeah, we will also need to remember the size we wouldn't if we would need, if we would just call malloc and free, we wouldn't because uh, the C, C runtime heap remembers block sizes on its own, but our memory manager uh, is actually defined in such a way that you, that it does not remember or does not, uh, is not required to remember the size. The, actually the debug version remembers the size and does consistency checks, but but not the release version. Okay. <clears throat> and now for the small stuff. For the small stuff, we will use one of these large blocks as our pool. And so we will use this one as our pool. Uh, it has a size already. So the, the thing we need to remember is how much is left. So the number of bytes that are still available in the pool, or let's call it free, that are still free in pool. Yeah. We use uh, one large block as a pool to allocate small objects from. <coughs> I think that mostly covers 
that covers the memory structures, to, the, the data structures that we need to keep track of things. Actually, not yet quite, because we need two arenas. Arenas, and actually, yeah, currently there are two, but there is this constant num pools in libjpeg that is currently two. That's just the number of pools that there are. And pools uh, for, this is now, yeah, this is now a bit confusing because what they have called jpool here, they should have called G arena, arena, I think, or G lifetime or something. So that's, that's a bit, maybe we should remain, we should rename that using a const expression. and explain what we mean by that. Let's say uh, we use one arena for each uh, lifetime category. Uh, called pools by lib jpeg. Uh, so I don't know who who has the non-standard terminology here. I hope it's it's not us. It's lib jpeg because calling these lifetime categories pools. Not sure what is the more standard terminology here. I think I think it's the one we use here that we say a pool is this contiguous block of memory from which we take smaller pieces um, to allocate small objects. This is unfortunately a bit confusing. Should we maybe should we maybe rename our pools to something else? Should we call this small object pool? At least to, to make it a bit Yeah, I don't know. I'm not so happy about the terminology here, but it will work either way. Okay. So uh, let's start with some easy stuff. Why not start with alloc small? Alloc small is very simple if we have enough bytes free in our current small object pool. So if we can satisf satisfy the request with our current pool, it's very simple. We basically just need to bump not bump a, bump a pointer because we, I mean, we could also keep a pointer to the, but let's do it like this. We um, object is uh, 
actually actually I do want to have a data or let's just calculate it so plus oh no that's a bit awkward. Now we would have to calculate plus size minus. Now let's 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 keep a pointer. It's literally as simple as that. So we just bump the pointer, we subtract the number of bytes, three, and that's it. Uh, the only thing to think about is alignment. And We probably want to keep alignment to a multiple of at least eight because I think that's what what libjpeg expects. I actually read in their code that there is something that they align I think even at 16 bytes boundaries. Uh, of course, I mean, this is throwing away one of the, partially throwing away one of the benefits of such a pool allocator for small objects that you could even, you could actually allocate individual bytes even from such a pool allocator. And you, that's nice because you can make your memory allocation very compact. And if you need such small, I mean, of course, keeping a pointer to a single byte is, is not very uh, efficient because the pointer is much much larger than the byte itself but sometimes you can have cases if you have variable size objects they could be just a single byte for example and um, so we are losing we are losing some packing density by aligning to a minimum uh, granularity on the other hand, it's I think it's what libjpeg expects. So I think we should do here, um, we should align this to a multiple of eight, uh, which we do by <clears throat> by adding seven and then um, masking out, I think like this, right? Masking out uh, this the, the three lower bits OK, 
because then yeah all of our pointers will always be 8 byte aligned um, Hello, said who? 12. How are you doing? We are implementing a memory allocator. I mean, actually, we are implementing kind of an adapter on top of a real memory allocator. So. So we are rounding up to a multiple of eight, thereby losing some benefits of the pool allocator, but that's what our customer expects, I think. Maybe this is something I should, I should clarify at some point. Communist riots in the USA. Wow, no, <laughs> I didn't see anything. Actually, currently I'm I'm trying to keep a bit away from from politics to manage my mood and to stay in a productive in a productive phase. So the other case is, okay, so the other case is we do not, um, we do not have enough bytes free to satisfy the request. Um, therefore, we need to get a new pool. And So we need a new pool to satisfy this request. Okay. Um, we will delegate this to a helper function because we will need this large block allocation somewhere else. Um, a have I ever had a bug where switch doesn't pick the right case? I mean, um, I'm not sure if I ever saw that. What I definitely had is the classical fall through uh, bug where you forget the break after a case and you fall through from one case to the next. That's the typical stuff that happens in switches. Um, Otherwise, otherwise something is confused because that should really not happen. I mean, you could have hit a compiler bug, but that is very, very unlikely in this case. So so I would guess that either you or your debugger is being confused by something. because switches do work. I mean, I have, I, have seen, um, I have seen compiler bugs in my programming career, but they are really, really, really rare. And normally not in something like switches that is used all the time and stressed a lot. So, What else could I think of? Yeah, 
Yeah, really not much as I can just say my my guess would be Okay, you're using VAR and passing a VA list around. Hmm. Yeah, you could you could I would look at some code if you if you could share it. <laughs> Put it in a paste bin or somewhere or um, GitHub. <clears throat> My guess would be that the switch is uh, yes, I know VA list, yeah. I'm using I'm using uh, variable arguments quite a lot. Um, I'm probably not aware right now how it is actually exactly implemented at the at the compiler dependent level. <clears throat> but I definitely use uh, VA list and and VA struct and so on um, quite a lot. Uh, I would guess that the switch is actually doing exactly what it should do, and that something else is is odd in your code. So we need a new pool. <clears throat> we will allocate a large block. Um, now the interesting question is, of course, how large should we make it? We should have some default uh, pool size. So let's let's define that. Default small object pool size. Sorry, not typing so badly. Um, uh, G GLN, no, I don't know right now about that. There are so many acronyms, so you will need to tell me what GLN means, I think. Let's use something like um, okay, so let's look at his code or her or its code or whatever. <clears throat> um <clears throat> What's the data type of this type flag? Mm. 
because if it's u in 64 then you have a problem in your printf statement definitely because uh, that is probably not the right format to print a u in 64. Okay, which which architecture are you on? That that percent x is the right <laughs> is the right format for a UN64. I would be <laughs> it's good enough. I don't know. <clears throat> because what, what normally will happen is that typically both of these percent axes will print parts of the type flag. And this will not ever get printed, this GLM type float. Yeah, I, I believe you that it, it doesn't solve the issue. Um, no, it's, it's what well, you can either do, um, let's see if I can, you can either do something like this, so LLX, or there is also something you can also do like this, um, but then you need, you need the, how is it called? I think you need this one, the, the include C in types for the pry x64. But otherwise, I mean, otherwise I don't see anything obvious at least. So all the breaks are here. Um, all looks unsuspicious. I mean, passing a VA list by pointer is maybe I think that will I I don't know if this this will really work because um, the thing is the VA arc has to do some has to do some magic with the stack, right? And the problem is you do the VA start probably in a different function, right? I mean, could work if the VA list remembers enough information about this function where you do the VA start. So I'm not sure, I mean, maybe it, maybe it works if the VA list remembers enough information about the, the function where you do the VA start and about its stack frame and so on, then I mean, this is uh, this is just the first thing that would be suspicious to me because I don't see anything else that is really suspicious in your code. Okay, here you have the variable arguments, parameter list. Uh, where is the VA start? Here's the VA start. 
Yeah, that's right. So Yeah, it's not, it's not the most straightforward thing. This, this passing around of the A list. And have you actually seen in a, in a debugger that it actually takes the wrong? Uh, the wrong case in the switch or do you are you inferring that backwards from the result I mean, what could be is that you have some other problem that is causing some stack corruption or such that you're actually overwriting. There's some, because there's some pointer magic here and lots of casting and so on here. So maybe if there's some mistake somewhere else, the first call actually could, could be messing up something on the stack um, and and the behavior of the second iteration could be a consequence of, of some memory corruption. So th I think that's the final thing I can say about it. I, I'm afraid I really cannot hurt you more than that. Um, but that's, that's a kind of error pattern I have seen many times. If something very, very strange happens, it's often the case that something before has messed up either the heap or the stack. And so, yeah, I'm afraid I, I cannot share any better insights than that. So let's see where we are in our code here. Sorry, I'm having some microphone troubles today. Uh, yeah, size, okay, size default, small default, small, object pool size, <clears throat> I guess something like 64K. 
would make sense. <clears throat> And so this will be the default small object pool size. <clears throat> However, if, if the size we need is actually larger than that because we have no guarantee that user code will only call this for really small uh, objects, that's a bit strange because we cannot, um, we cannot decide by ourselves. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not totally sure about your switch picking the wrong case if you don't really see it directly in the debugger or, I mean, you could also uh, put debug printfs in, into the cases and see if really the wrong one is selected. Um, I mean, theoretically, a memory corruption could even mess up a switch because it might have something like a jump table, but usually that's in write protected, um, that's in write protected um, se uh, memory segments. So. I really think there's probably something else going on. Yeah, cannot say much more remotely. I mean, the, v, the VA list is probably not much more than a pointer to, to stack. So passing this by pointer within the dynamic scope of the, the function that got the, the parameters um, should normally work, I think. Yeah, I think it's a case for a debugger. You really need to see what's going on. And my money would be on, my money would be on some kind of memory corruption. <clears throat> of course, it's only rhetorical money. <laughs> because I have no idea. So uh, if the size of object is actually larger than the block size, or let's put it the other way around, if block size is smaller than the size of object, then block size will be set to size of object. <clears throat> so um, we allocate the large block. And then we say bytes free is actually the block size that we allocated minus the size of the object that we need. And the next free in pool. So the object itself is actually the
is actually this one plus the size of um, of the large block. And then this is object plus size of object. Okay, that would be my, of course, here we must also pass the pool ID. Sorry, pool ID. Um, yeah, and here of also, we must actually get the arena. So let's say arena arena is matcher arenas plus pool. ID, but of course we need to check pool ID uh, for out of range. So if pool ID is less than zero or pool ID is greater equal um, greater equal n arenas, then we we must fail. Um, and so for failing, we need the error manager. We need so many managers. It's like, it's like in a big company, it's horrible. Everything will go down the drain because we have so many managers and no workers. So we fail. Um, invalid pool ID. We expected something in the range from zero to whatever. And it is something else. Okay. Now we have the arena. And here we actually need to use the arena, not the manager pointer. large block what do we need yeah we need the pool ID and we need the block size actually we we should probably call this the data size uh, we also need Oh, we will also need the error manager. Let's p 
pass this first like we do with our status and let's actually put this here so <coughs> this actually needs the error manager for bailing out if something is wrong okay so first we need to um, we need to calculate the allocation size and that is size of large block plus data size and then we actually need to We need to do some actual memory allocation. The debug string is this. So if we have a, uh, we also need the status pointer because this macro uses that and if we have a fail if we have a fail we need to do this jump otherwise we return the block and before that we will actually set the size. Let's also call this the data size. Because it doesn't include the, the header. Um, also, we will need to link things. which is very easy so but first we need yeah again we need to get the arena um, and here probably in this we will assume that pool ID is has been checked before so um, we'll note this as a precondition that uh, pool ID has been validated by the caller. And we will simply do an assert here inside here. Uh, we get the arena um, and now we do the linking so if the arena has <coughs> has a last large block already then we set the next pointer of this block to what we currently allocated um, what we just allocated and we set 
we of course need to set the next pointer of this one to null. And we set the last block to us, to what we have allocated. Otherwise, we set both the, both the first block and the last block to us. That's it. Okay. Let's also do some debug print. Allocating large block with data size equal this data. Hmm. That was the small object stuff. The alloc large should actually be easier, I guess. So we will also need to um, we will need to validate the pool ID. And then we will call actually I mean this this wouldn't even need to return the block because it's always the last block right but maybe it's more convenient to return it So maybe we don't even need the arena here, but um, in this case, we will simply always allocate a large block alloc large block oh yeah we need uh, we need the error manager yeah then why not assert that we have an error manager um, manager Pool ID size of object. This already does all the all the remain. So this already does the error checking in case the allocation fails. Um, and so the only thing we need to do is calculate the object pointer. So I think that's it for the large one. <clears throat> for the S array. Maybe just let's let's always get the error manager so that we
I should have done this right from the beginning. Can maybe later remove those that we do not need. So a sample array. This is just this two-dimensional dimension, structure. And we will implement this similar to what libjpeg itself does, that we first we will um, first we will First, we'll allocate an array of row pointers. We will do this. Actually, we don't need, this is already a pointer to an array of pointers. Uh, we'll actually do this by delegating to the small allocation stuff. Samp row. No, I don't need to change anything here. J Samp row. That will be what we return in the end. And now we need to allocate the actual sample data and we will do something slightly simpler than in libjpeg because there they allocate the rows the, the samples for rows in chunks of a certain number of rows we will just allocate it all in one block because we are on 64-bit desktop so no need to fuss around, uh, no need to freak around. And we will just allocate a large block. So we got the large thing. And now we just need to set, we just need to set the, the row pointers. Uh, yeah, we should we should say time size of J sample here. That's important. So
<clears throat> I think that's it. It's So we don't need to check the pool ID here because the functions that we call do that by themselves. So let's um, let's do the same here, just with slightly different uh, data types. It's exactly the same apart from that. So just the element size is different. Okay, now we are getting to the virtual stuff. So first we need to first first we need to allocate this structure here that we are supposed to return. Uh, we will use this, the alloc small to do that. Okay, it's called like this. <laughs> Okay, I hope we don't have that because that's so dangerous to define the type with a different size. That's me. Okay, so that is actually an incomplete type. That's nasty. On the other hand, it means, so we could either try to get the definition of this type, which is somewhere in the internals of libjpg, or we could just cast to our own data type, which is the safer option, I think. So, we will actually treat this exactly in the same way So, 
we will treat this exactly in the same way like the large ones. That's it. The only thing is we need to do the pre-zero uh, if it's requested. So we will do the following. How is it called? Samp oh, sorry. Chase samp array. No, alloc s array. Info pool ID sample paroles numbers. I think that's what we need, right? Sample paroles numbers. Yeah. So, and then we will just, so we will zero it. If pre zero. And here we will rely on our memory layout. Let's call this sample array size. So let's actually put this comment here so it's cl more clear what we are referring to. Samples per row. times number rows times size of sample or J, J sample and we just zero the thing and then we return it cast it to this one which we can do even for an incomplete type We will do basically the same for block. B array and here also B array that's important because it affects the size right what is 
this is not right this should be blocks per row have we the same mistake here yes we have the same mistake here samples per row okay um, then actually realize virtual, virtual arrays does not need to do anything And also these access functions will be trivial because they will simply return a casted pointer and that's it. That is it. Actually, normally I don't. I don't like this space. Okay, fine. Free pool. That should be simple. We need this. So <clears throat> we have the arena. Uh, now um, free the large blocks. Mm. while next and we do Actually, we don't need status, we just need the memory manager. And we do a memory free sized of block. Um, and the block size is, is the data size plus size of large block. We probably should call this header. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's so long. So we have freed the large blocks. Uh, we will clear the pointers to them. Uh, we will also clear the small small object pool oh 
we actually still need to handle a case of allocating the first small object pool. So I look small. In this case, we will actually assert that we do have a a small object pool already and a next pointer. Hmm. Actually, if this is zero, if this is zero, this can actually activate. So we let's handle let's handle the zero case separately. The question is just, are we expected we are probably expected to return a null a non non zero pointer even for size of object zero. So that means we will set it to one here. Because here, would, here we would get a problem at the beginning. I think the rest is fine. So finally, the self-destruct. I think we just free all the pools, right? I think. Anything else to do? We don't have any data outside of the pools or arenas, as we call them. So I don't think there's anything else to do. Uh, here we must definitely initialize everything, which is easy because we will just mem set the whole thing to zero. That's it. I think that modular few thousand syntax errors, we have an implementation of a memory manager. And probably we have one or two thinkos inside, I guess.
everything else would be a miracle. So let's start. Let's first compile. Let's first get the syntax errors out. So these need to be static. <clears throat> okay, we certainly have tons of these kind of errors. So let's quickly scan through this. Yeah, maybe we don't have so many of those. There we have another one. Samples parole is actually logs parole here. Here also. Here also. Strange, I thought I. I, s I thought I had made all these replacements. Maybe I only did it for the virtual one. Okay, it doesn't know this one. J will be array pointer, it's defined here. I mean, even if this is incomplete, let's try again. Okay, we compiled. Uh, let's see if things currently work. We are not using yet this new memory manager. And I think things are working. So let's dive down deeply. Into my file system. Um, Yes, we see a nice USA with the locations of the LIGO gravitational wave observatories. Very nice. Okay, so let's start using this new allocator. JPEG create decompress J 
JPEG Memory Manager. We init this thing. Uh, let's see. Um, init. We pass it our memory manager, and that's it. And then we set this to the memory manager. Hmm. This could already be everything that we need. Uh, let's see if this function um, let's see if this function oh Uh, this does this resets the memory manager strange and then uh, then it initializes the standard memory manager And it already calls and no, what are these people doing here? Ah. They set up their own memory manager and already call an allocation function. Why? How are you supposed how are you supposed to override this memory manager if they do that? And guys, what are you smoking? This is the only, let's see if this is the only implementation of this. Yeah, looks like that's the only one. Very funny. Very funny. How am I supposed to overwrite this stuff?
Come on, people. How is anybody supposed to override this? What does the documentation say? If necessary, you can replace the back end of the memory manager. Okay. Do they mean that I can only replace the system, the system dependent functions? Oh, come on, this is so bad. I mean, the good thing is I can always patch the library, right? Since I'm linking statically to it and I have the source and the license is not causing problems. That's so stupid. Oh God. <laughs> I mean, it's really mean because this is completely parallel to the error manager and the, the error manager and the source manager and the destination manager and you can replace all of them and you cannot replace the memory manager. I mean, come on people. That's, that's absurd. That is absurd. I'm just curious, how are you supposed to replace the back end? Because the back end are these ones that JPEG get small and JPEG get large, blah, blah, blah. These ones. How are you supposed to replace these? I mean, they are just, you can just replace them by making the linker substitute something else. But I don't see any, I mean, come on. Okay, I've had enough. I will patch this library. Where was this? Create decompress, where are you?
<clears throat> you actually need to save the memory manager here also. and copy it back here like they do here. And here we will actually only call this if this is zero that's it freak you unfriendly library try to try to deal with that library I'm just replacing your memory manager whether you like it or not so I already want my manager working here okay let's rebuild the, the library with this patch this is so stupid why do we have to go through Spain. Oh, I forgot something. It did not find the, the SIMD extensions. I forgot to set up build environment. I should I should probably call this from build so I do not forget it again. I never remember, do you have to use call in this case or not? Let's see. Let's just try it out. So currently we don't have NISM in the path. Yeah, I think you need, because otherwise it just switches over to, it switches over to this one. And now probably we have the path here. Yeah, we have NSM in the path. So we, we need to do call. But the question is, does it then export the path? We need to try this with a new shell.
Yes, it does. It does export it directly into the environment. Fine. The problem is that our change might have broken some existing uses of this function that do not zero the memory manager. So if the build process invokes this function, we might have a problem, but maybe it doesn't. I mean, <clears throat> the unit tests are not passing for the JVIC Turbo for me anyway, so what do we have to lose, right? We can just patch away happily. I'm somehow relieved to see these many files compiling here because if I have troubles like I had today, first not understanding the interface of the library and, and wasting hours, and then now this kind of stuff where you feel really like someone is pulling your leg because the interface is so badly designed. I always think maybe I should have just written this thing from scratch but then on, on the other hand if you see all of this stuff i guess it's a huge amount of work especially the testing the testing of such things is always such a huge amount of work so okay let's Ninja. We should now already see tracing trace messages from our own memory manager. And we probably see a horrible crash also. Yeah, we see trace messages and we see a horrible crash, as expected. But that does not <clears throat> surprise me. For sure we have made mistakes. But we even get far enough to actually I think they are even correct, the image dimensions that we get here. Output components 3, that, that actually looks correct. <clears throat> so, we did get some small allocations and we allocate a large block to pull them together. I look small, blah, 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 data, I look small, I look small. Actually, it does quite a lot of allocations. Wow. Quite a lot of allocations. And even large ones that aren't that large, actually. And then it crashes. So let's just look at that. Why does it crash? Remedy to the rescue. Uh, 
Oh, uh, because I move everything. I moved everything. So <clears throat> I just need to remove, no, not this one. We need to remove one level here. Crash. Where do we crash? Oh no, we don't have a call stack. That's bad. <clears throat> we don't have a call stack. So we messed up something either in this. I mean, we are somewhere deep in the SSE part of libjpg turbo and we are reading a location that has yeah so an invalid pointer <laughs> mm. yeah we will need to step we will need to step How far do we get? Okay, no, we cannot set it here. No, why not? We have this problem again that I cannot set breakpoints. Maybe now. Yeah. So, breakpoints don't work. So let's do something. Let's, let's save the whole, because maybe that's a bug in Remedy that we need to reproduce. So let's save the whole thing, the whole directory for later. So we can look at that later. So let's see if we have everything. Yeah, yeah, we have everything. Okay. Hmm. Let's first try to fix the debugging problem. Usually what helps is to do a full clean and rebuild. And I need to get some tea. Let's try again.
does it still have the run? It still has the run. Why? Why? Why no? Why no save? Let's save this over this one. Replace. Yes. PDF parser. We want this. Still doesn't work. That's bad. Our program doesn't work and our debugger doesn't work. And that's not a good place to be in. <coughs> Okay, then let's do it without the debugger. Let's find out what's going on. Let's see if we also still crash if we remove all of all of this. So we only parse the header now. <clears throat> Let's see if we still crash. We don't crash. So this works. Uh, let's just do start compress, uh, start de decompress. <clears throat> Still no crash. Uh, let's read the first scan line only. We crash. So we crash. We crash in the first scan line. It would be so nice to debug this.
still has the wrong, I, I don't get that. Why has it still the wrong thing here? We have no call stack, we have nothing. Well, we can step into main at least. Can we go here? No. No, we cannot. Let's just step through it. I hope we don't have too many entries in this dictionary because I can only step, I cannot set breakpoints. So, Oh no, oh no, this will take hundreds of. And we cannot set a breakpoint here. <laughs> That's so stupid. <clears throat> That is so stupid. We cannot do anything but run through it. At least remedy is fast. This would still be nicer if it would be working and fast. Only 100 to go now. Only 100 to go. So this is the crashing function. <clears throat> hmm. 
Yeah, hard to know what, what will crash. That's really difficult now because we don't know, we have no idea where this will crash. It's a gamble. Let's see, will it crash here? No. Yeah, it crashes in the inverse DCT. Let's try something else. Let's not use our Let's not use our memory manager. Let's zero this one and try again. Just to make sure that our patching of the library did not break everything. That's one thing we can do. Let's first see. <clears throat> okay, no crash. So it's definitely, it's not our patch. It's really exchanging, exchanging the memory manager that causes the problem. So unsurprisingly, our memory manager has a bug. That's not surprising. Of course it has bugs. We just, we just wrote it down very quickly. Um, the other thing I could do, I want to make sure that all these trace messages are really printed so we will flush them out because sometimes with standard out you have the problem that things are not really printed. Because they are not flushed. So No, that was not a problem. Uh, 
and let's see which functions are called. So we, we see a realize virtual arrays function. We don't actually see request functions for the virtual arrays. So we, I think we are not using any virtual arrays. Um, a potential problem could be, I think that, so we are not initializing some, there are also data members in this interface, which is not nice for, a, for something that should be a virtual interface, really, uh, an abstract interface, really. Maybe we should set these, I don't know. Uh, let's see how, how the standard implementation sets these. Okay, this is system dependent. Let's set both of them to the absolute maximum of the data type. I somehow, I have the I have the suspicion that that is not a problem. <laughs> no, I didn't want to. I did not want that. I have too many shortcuts. Okay, so I suspect that this was not a problem. Let's see. This would be so much easier with a stack trace, I think. Maybe maybe a stack trace wouldn't help that much. For sure we have some memory corruption somewhere going on. We do have an S array. I mean, I think the S array is the most likely culprit. That's the most complicated thing we do. And that's something we do not for the header really, but only later. <laughs> what do we do? Oh, debug that doesn't work. We could use Visual Studio to debug. Uh, 
Uh, let's try, yeah, let's try that. Let's check at least if we get a stack trace. So we get, we get exactly the same exception location, that's something. We also don't get a call stack. So probably we are really <coughs> messing up the stack or something. Yeah, that doesn't really help. Let's compare with the standard implementation. Yeah, this is, so they round, they round up to two times the alignment size. Which is, alignment size is eight. Oh, seem the alignment size is even 32. So this is actually an alignment to 64. <clears throat> wow. This is rounded up to 60, multiple of 64. 
bytes because it divides by j sample. A j sample is actually a byte, so. So maybe we have an alignment problem with the SIMD instructions because we see that the SIMD instruction is failing. They do exactly the same thing here that we do. It's just a bit more complicated. A bit more complicated because they do not assume that they can allocate all the rules in one chunk. The blocks per row is not Round it up. Oh, this is also not good. Let's see if it. Another one of this. But that, I guess, was not the problem. <clears throat> the alignment might be a problem. Thirty two byte alignment is quite a lot. We don't get that from our memory manager. So actually, uh, let's Let's just get it done and let's align everything to 64 bytes. So, um, 
there is an integer type I think that is that is defined to be able to take a pointer right is this in pointer or pointer int or is there something like that I don't remember how to don't remember if that existed and what it what it is called I don't know let's <clears throat> looks scary but hardly does anything right it's just rounding up the address Promise just ah oh, we actually actually we need we need to align the data start not we could just make yeah we will ju just for now make it the same by we have here eight byte eight bytes so these are 16 We just need to do some math to actually align the data start, but but this we 
We will also align this. So we align this to 64. Also, the samples per row needs to be I think for the blocks is not an issue because the size of block is already 64. So if the array itself is aligned, which we will check here, we should be fine. <clears throat> Hey, we didn't crash. <clears throat> we didn't crash. Am I missing something? Did I not install our memory manager? I did install it. So let's again activate all this code down here. Uh, let's not break after one scan line. So currently we should have an invalid image. Let's check that. Image should not be looking good right now. 
or maybe I mean maybe we did not overwrite it right because we also deactivated this yeah image <laughs> image does not look good that uh, that's not so Oh, interesting. Yes, it works. It was an alignment problem. It was an alignment problem for the Cindy. That, that's what it was. Scary. Scary. Um, that's an interesting thing. Unknown heap block nine five five six. That's probably something that is easier to fix. <clears throat> yeah, that's probably due to our alignment stuff. We moved, we moved, we removed the block. So actually, we need to store. We need to store the original We need to store the original pointer that might be unaligned Because that's the point that we need for freeing. And the log size we also need to calculate correctly. We, we have a lot of cleanup to do, but first let's get things to work. So, so Let's call this the alloc size. Because our debug heap is very picky, fortunately, and it noticed that it does not know this memory block address that we are trying to free. Mm hmm that worked 
and it's wonderful. We have a working a working memory manager. I mean, we did not exhaustively test it. So, the, for example, the virtual stuff is not really is not really tested currently. That's only used for some very special functions, I think. Uh, let's look a bit at, let's uh, turn the font size down a bit and let's look at Oh, these colors are horrible But yeah, whatever Okay, this is the first one in the second pool, so that's why it's allocating a new, a new large block. And maybe the 64K are excessive. And maybe, yeah, the question is, our small objects are now at least 64 bytes. That's quite a lot. But I think that, that the lib JPEG library standard allocator also rounds them up to the, at least to 32, to their line size, and then to, to the, 64 for the for the large blocks probably and for the SRE and BRE things. So the small block alignment can probably be 32 and the large small object alignment can probably be 32. We okay for I think for for every component it allocates one S array, yeah, three times. So for, for one for each component. And then actually we have no more allocations. And that's nice. And then okay, at the end we we free everything. That all looks very nice. We just have a lot to clean up. Oh yeah, first, I mean, this, this dummy stuff is stupid. That's just because I was lazy. I was lazy with my math.
this is very scary looking but it's very simple actually Okay, this we should actually do immediately here. And this should be For small, we will actually have a separate value, small object alignment. And we will do a static assert uh, that this is actually a divisor of the large block alignment. <clears throat> That's fine.
The row stride must be large block aligned. So uh, let's calculate the row stride here. This the row stride must be large block aligned. And then the data size is row stride times number of rows. And actually, actually, we want to assert that for every row. Uh, same here, I think. Let's also do this like this. Yeah, that's fine. And those, I mean, they just they just do exactly the same, right? I mean, uh, we just need to be careful here with the zeroing. I think, I think, I think uh, we should do the zeroing actually We should do the zeroing here, it's much less error prone. So let's actually let's do something like this. Because we cannot make a default argument because these functions are called with function pointers. So we will just do this and then we know exactly the data size here. <clears throat> that is much less error prone. This will simply delegate. Hmm. 
<laughs> Except for the debug message, maybe. Otherwise, it will simply <clears throat> and the same thing here. Okay, we should actually print the pre-zero. So here, after allocating, this will simply delegate except for the message um, and here we can just we can remove this and we can pass the pre-zero in. That's much safer. Because here we would have to repeat the size calculation and so on, and that's error prone. Oh, it's just one thing I'm not sure about here is this passes a start row here. So should we advance this pointer here by start row? I need to check how this is implemented here. Yeah, I think we need to advance it.
Yep. We really should do a sanity check here. Something like this. Um, <clears throat> oh, no. Um, This is allocated as a small object, so we cannot get its size. <laughs> Maybe we should actually allocate this as, as a large object, just in order to be able to check its size. So I'm not completely sure what to do about that. So We should do that. And now it will actually be interesting to see, to check whether we actually have no more malloc calls out of libjpeg turbo.
I actually feel like reducing this a bit. No, this. Yeah. When I type it, I know it's the right number because I type these numbers so often. I'm more sure than when I read them. I think we have a memory manager. Fine. I mean, in case you're wondering uh, why we hit this assertion, this is just because um, our data source system, so our data source setup for the PDF stream is not yet really fully implemented. We currently just try if the JPEG stuff works and then we let everything uh, go to hell. So that's normal. Um, this, will, this will come. but we definitely get a valid JPEG image out of this stuff, not the, the noise that we saw before. Uh, let's just for fun uh, try again the 62 that we had and maybe another one just to conclude this session. By the way, uh, said who 12 are you still there? If so, I would be interested whether you could make any progress on your problem. <clears throat> Let's see if we have a, yeah, we have a different one. We have the gravitational waves. Whoop. Um, let's just pick a random one somewhere in the middle of the file. One hundred forty-eight. <laughs> no, that's exact. That's exactly what we had. I mean, yeah. Maybe we should pick a different file to have some some more diversity here. No, yeah. Sync drive C. Physics papers. Let's not those with the strange characters. Let's let's pick good old Maxwell, 1865. It could have some nice images. Maxwell.
229. That's the only one. Oh, uh, no, should be fine. Should be fine. <laughs> oh, that's just the chase store logo. <laughs> that's funny. But it looks nice. That is a valid decoding, I would say. So, need to pick a better one. I want to have a nice conclusion here. The three grades of quantum mechanics. Let's pick this one, 1926 form. I'm just afraid that this will this will also have only the chase the logo maybe if we are unlucky. Okay, I don't Don't find any. Millican, maybe. Oh, that's a problem, probably. I just want a nice JPEG image somewhere. Let's pick an older one, maybe with more luck with the older ones. This looks nice, 28. That's a whole page probably. That will take some time. Because we are printing every single byte. And also flushing standard out all the time. That's not the fastest thing to do. Zero bytes remaining in buffer. I love to see that. Did you see how long writing the PNG took? Wow, it's actually three pages. I mean, I don't know. 
I don't know if they are supposed to look like this. Maybe something to look into tomorrow if this is actually how this file look or how this stream looks. I mean, they look, they look like valid scans with quite low resolution. Um, not sure about the noise part. I mean, could be there in the image. We don't know. Let's just take a quick look at our memory allocations for this. Okay, we lost, did we lose the scroll back? Oh no. We don't have enough scroll back. Actually, not a lot of data that is allocated here for this rather large image. Okay, but I'm satisfied for today. So lots of things, of course, to, to look at, to test. Um, we did not at all test the virtual array stuff. <clears throat> we uh, did not test error handling. We did not. Uh, we did not verify that no more malloc and free calls are made by the libjpg library. So these are all things that remain to be done. But we do have our custom memory allocator that was the goal for the stream. And everything, now all the allocations that libjpg does in our code, in our dynamic scope, should go through this memory manager. gives us total control and also leak checking. So that's something that will be interesting in fast testing uh, to, to actually stimulate all the error handling paths and check that they don't have memory leaks. <clears throat> 